Hello guys and welcome to another video. We are gathered here today to watch the very first and very worst Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief adaptation. With the TV show coming out so soon, I figured this was the perfect time to revisit the original masterpiece. And I did tell you guys like a year ago that I was gonna do it. When we reach 12,000, what I'm gonna do is make a reaction video to the Lightning Thief movie and I didn't do it. So this is me today sacrificing my sanity for you guys and doing it. So the first time I watched this movie was way before reading the books, so I generally enjoyed it and actually really liked it. However, the second time I watched it, I was like, okay, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is this is this is wrong. Everything, literally everything is wrong. I was in my uh, adaptation purism era, so now, 10 years later, I feel like I've really changed as a person, as a reader, and as a commentator of book to movie adaptations. Having said that, let's all rewatch Percy Jackson The Lightning Thief together. Get ready for a cringe fest, people. Let's go. I will try to refrain from saying that's wrong, that's not how it happened in the books every single time something happens on screen, because we would be here for hours. Let the torture begin. I don't know if I'm strong enough for this, but I'm doing it for you guys. If I remember correctly, the movie starts with Poseidon coming out of the sea of the ocean and walking all the way to Mount Olympus to talk to Zeus, who warns him that, dude, I know your kid or whoever stole my lightning bolt, and that's how it all starts. And then the first shot we get of Logan Lerman is of him at the bottom of the swimming pool, and then you're like, this is, it's so obvious who his father is. Like, there's absolutely no mystery whatsoever. While I begrudgingly give them credit for the cool shot, and it looks pretty epic, you know, a, a guy in full Greek battle armor coming out of the harbor, it still goes against the books and the mythology rules there where they're shrouded by the mist, so this wouldn't happen. He wouldn't have to traumatize that poor fisherman. Still a cool shot though. Cinematically, I guess it's not that bad. We'll have to keep watching. Also, gods can teleport, so I don't know why he would come out of the ocean, become human size, and then walk all the way to the Empire State, because I know the Empire State is not near a pier. It's a long way there. And he has to stop across the sidewalk when it's green. It's not your best plan, Poseidon. He was clearly stalling. But the Empire State is lit up blue, so that's something. It's been many years. This is not only in Percy Jackson mythology, where you know, some things you have to take with a grain of salt because it's Rick Riordan either like choosing to stick with one side of the story in mythology or like cho picking and choosing what he wants to tell the story. But in all Greek mythology, the gods meet up every single solstice, at least the winter solstice and the summer solstice. This makes no sense. I'm sorry, it doesn't. I like the casting for Zeus. I think they got him spot on. Thunderclouds, but no lightning. Stolen. You think I took it? Omnipotence has blinded you, brother. We are forbidden from stealing each other's powers. A little bit of exposition. But our children aren't. Literally. What is this? A uh, minute? Three of the movie, half of that was credits. Minute one of the movie. We know this is Poseidon. They haven't said his name, maybe, but he literally was a gigantic being that came out of the ocean. So, I mean, connect the dots, people. And they're like, oh, my son. Okay, so we know this movie is about Poseidon's son. Besides, you know, like the gigantic poster of him controlling the water. Besides all of that, the next shot we're going to get is of Logan Lerman in the water. So there's literally no mystery around this. I have to say that's something that also is going to happen to the TV show because we've seen the cast. I mean, I guess people who haven't read the books aren't following the casting, but it's going to be pretty tough for that Poseidon reveal to take anyone by surprise. If your son is the thief, I will send him to the depths of Tartarus. <laughs> Poseidon threatening Zeus, okay, like that would happen. By midnight on the summer solstice. So they do know the summer solstice is a thing, okay, okay. Very dramatic, okay. I wish he had turned into like a pillar of smoke and disappeared, or to, like a gigantic eagle. I feel like that would have been even more dramatic. Okay, what a setup. What a setup. Let's see if we can keep this going. <laughs> even though that's cool, it doesn't quite scream godly to me. They're like at the top of the Empire State, but they have to break a door every time they want to go into Olympus. Doesn't seem very godly. And now let's cut to Logan Lerman underwater. Come on. Let's cut to him. Cut, 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 cut. There it is. Th this shot, I remember sitting in theaters 
with my sister. I was like, he's cute. And she was like, what are you saying? And then when he came out of the water, she was like, okay, now, now I see your vision. Now I see it. Okay, I'll be the one to say it because I know you guys don't want to say it. I think Logan Lerman would have been a great casting for Percy had he been like five years younger. Because if you've seen pictures of him when he was younger, he was the cutest. He had the vibe. He definitely had the vibe. So he was robbed and he does not deserve the hate that he gets. It's not the actor's fault. Definitely the script writer's fault. And he's alive. Is a beast. A beast, man. Percy might be a little bit like his book counterpart, like just like the barest bit, but Grover is a completely different character. Like this man, who is a man, is definitely full of charisma, of Riz. He is giving, and I'm sorry to say that Grover in that first book wasn't giving. So this guy is not getting bullied on Percy's behalf. That's all I'm saying. How long was that? Seven minutes. Seven minutes, Seven that's minutes. nothing. I just like being in water. <sighs> There's one place I can think. Could you make it any more obvious? Like, they're laying it on thick. Mm -hmm. He knows. And he's not supposed to know. Yancey Academy, okay. Okay, so I didn't know they got that right. Getting the name right is like the bare minimum, but at least they got it. At least they got there. And they gave Grover the crutches. So I'm like, I'm grabbing at straws here, people. The fact that they changed it from middle school to high school just gives us such different vibes. Let's see our first depiction of dyslexia. Well... Baby. I'm sorry, I don't know. She, would, I think she's Anybody good casting else? for that as well. Percy's so sad he has dyslexia and he's not doing well in school. Where's Mr. Brunner? Where's the Latin class that he enjoys? Let's go meet Smelly Gabe. I think that's another thing they got, right? It's not too hard to like play an a I do feel like this version of Sally is maybe more realistic because she just seems sadder, you know, to be in the situation that she's in. Whereas the book Sally is more like still just full of life. She really seems like the world has been putting her through it. The ADHD. You know, I thought this school was supposed to make things better. At least they mentioned dyslexia and ADHD. Their minimum. When? Hmm? Tonight? Tomorrow? When? understand why Sally didn't tell him sooner like waiting until he's 16 in this book just makes no sense poor guy's so angsty what oh on? smelly Gabe so what it's supposed to magically float from the ice box and into my hand good casting puzzle <laughs> <laughs> if he wanted it oh, they got come one on, man you have to do that right here it's disgusting we're, baby we're Percy in kitchen. wouldn't say that some respect Full right, of attitude right from the get-go. This feels like uh, they haven't known each other long, even though Gabe's been around for like quite a while. And Yancey, it doesn't look like it's a boarding school. Like Percy lives here with his mom. No, is like this the way it is every single day? Movie, because yeah, that sucks. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it is because if this type of confrontation went down every day, something would have happened earlier on. Doesn't seem like Percy's afraid of him though. He's been good to us, Percy, in ways you just, you don't understand. I feel like they don't is explain this very well, though. Do they? Do they talk about the smell later on? Because he said he smells bad, but then they don't talk about half-blood smelling, I feel like. Ooh, this is Percy's favorite place in, like, the sixth book with Annabelle. <laughs> Something this movie got right without even knowing. Okay, and they got the med part right, so once again, bare minimum. Be prepared. Everything is about to change, Percy. See, everything is about to change. You're telling me Percy hears- Ah! That's so creepy! He hears a voice in his head of someone like speaking to him and he's just like- <laughs> well, I want to go to the meds so badly now. And this is the first time we see Mr. Brunner. The casting for this is funny because it's the guy from Mamma Mia, but I think it, it's fine. And they got the explanation of the mythology like quite right. It's not too bad, but why the hell is Percy like with his earphones on? Plugged in to his iPod, which we see later on in the Medusa scene. How should I put this hook up? That's not Grower. I'm sorry. It's not. You have something in common. Percy. Perseus? Again, laying it on thick. How does Percy not know about Perseus? I feel like his, Sally would have mentioned it to him. You know, it's his namesake. <laughs> Grover just being like, oh, this guy, this guy knows. Correct. 
We need to talk. <laughs> this is less creepy with Percy being like a teenager or maybe even more creepy because what are her intentions when like separating him from the group? Mrs. Dodds, Mrs. Dodds. Mrs. Dodds? Oh, whoa, hey, hey. <laughs> Ow. This you is get funny. up there. <laughs> whoa, whoa! Ugly. Maybe the movie got like the action oh, scenes right? You stole the lightning bolt! I don't know what you're talking about! Give it to me! Or I will bite your heart out! Oh my god. Release him! <laughs> you Why would he release him? him or I swear I'll tear you to pieces! How? He doesn't have a bow. Does Percy do nothing in the scene? No, he doesn't. Okay, get him the pen. Get it. This is a pen. What? You don't get that this is a pen scene? Oh, go crazy. What the hell? Oh. I should be on medication. Percy, calm should be down. Okay, everything's gonna be okay. Oh, I'm going crazy. Oh, I should be on medication. I should be on medication. <laughs> okay, he got me there. Oh my god, I paused it at the wrong time. I'm sorry, Logan Lerman. I'm going crazy. I should be on medication. Oh my god. This is talking about the ADHD. Like, what are you referencing here, Percy? <laughs> not expect this to get like a genuine laugh out of me. <laughs> there should be a medication. When does the this is a pen scene happen? Because I swore it was here. And the good thing about this scene in the books is that it's Percy's like first real win kind of because he defends himself with a uh, riptide against the fury. But here it's just like Mr. Brunner being like, oh, I'm going to tear you to pieces without like a weapon in hand, which, you know, it's not too menacing because he doesn't have like magical powers he can use unless you count healing, which doesn't come in handy in this scene. So I don't know what, it, what was the threat? She just turned into that thing. A fury concealed in our school, I should have known. This is the thing I don't like. They, they know from the beginning who Percy's parent is. Who found him? He's no longer secure. Look, I'm standing right here. And yeah, he's standing right there. That's very rude. I kind of miss the gaslighting. In times of severe distress. <laughs> this is a pen. This is a pen. Take him to his mother. That delivery alone should get people to like back off Logan Lerman. <laughs> he's starting to win me over as like this movie's Percy. I'm enjoying this movie only because I watched it before reading the book and I feel like separate from the book it's an okay movie. Let's not get into that with Sea of Monsters because it's a horrible book to movie adaptation and it's a horrible movie altogether. Percy come on, come on man, come on! Grover just shouting like come on man, come on! At least gaslight the guy, don't just shout at him. How does Percy ditch Grover here? He doesn't? Okay, so this is like the first big departure plot-wise to the movie because there's no like Percy and Sally going off to the cabin. He doesn't get the drains and Grover doesn't just like appear suddenly and then they go on the car and the Minotaur thing happens. It's like the three of them all together from the beginning. It just happens so much quicker. Whereas in the book, there's like more days for Percy to feel gaslit. Hey, don't talk about my mom like that, you bald headed freak. No, oh. hey, hey, calm down. Ah. Ah. While Grover would protect Percy, this is not a Grover scene. I'm sorry, this actor is not giving Grover, but it's not his fault, it's the script. And then they just run away from like the toxic, terrible gayness of it all with his car i'm sorry about that <laughs> car scene looked so fake like the background out of the windows you can feel the green screen and then you came along and then it was just perfect was it but he had to leave did he no honey he was forced to he loved you leaving you it was probably the most difficult thing he ever did lies okay so what is the whole percy jackson first book series about it's about neglectful parents this goes against all of that all throughout the series percy finally realizes that luke is semi right because half-bloods are being mistreated by their parents and by not being claimed and by not being recognized it's kind of like ruining their whole lives so he's like okay you're going to have to be like better parents that's what the whole movie is about but if poseidon is such a loving parent from the start that like contradicts the whole thing it doesn't work why did he have to go 
because he's Sorry, watch out! I don't feel like this is me being nitpicky. Okay, she was about to say because he's Poseidon. Oh my god. Pfft, mind blown. If the cow came from behind the car, how the hell did Grover see it? This Minotaur scene is quite interesting to look at. Oh, goat butt. Okay, let's see. Is it me or is it raining cows? My god, Grover. It's not the time. It's not the time you're about to die. He's like cracking jokes like it's a Marvel movie. Why are you taking your pants off? What are you doing? My job. Whoa, whoa. You're half okay. donkey. They got that from the book. But why the hell does he have to take his pants off to break a window? Like, Guys, watch out this class. Obviously, you just broke a freaking window. Grover is like too good, too helpful here. And it doesn't make sense with his backstory in the second movie with Talia. It doesn't feel like he feels unworthy and that he has to prove himself. It feels like he's doing a pretty good job at it. Oh my god. I don't think that's the sound a bull makes when they roar. Bulls don't roar. <laughs> What does it? It's why I'm like, Mur. Okay, the entrance to Camp Half Blood. Pretty cute. He's like, oh, I magic dyslexia. What are you doing? This is as far as I can go. I feel like they could have made an exception like Annabeth did for Tyson. Wait, that's more of like a plot hole in the books because Annabeth was the one who let Tyson in. Therefore, Grover should also know the trick to let someone into Camp Half Blood. So he really should have pulled that trick off in this situation if it happened this way in the books. But obviously we need the conflict, we need the, um, the, br the fridging of the mother, so that's what we'll have. Whoa! Use one pen and click it! Click it, it's not a clicky, it's a cap. The sword is cool, I I'll give them that. Okay, mom is gone, what will he do about it? And Grover's just like, oh my god. I was about to complain that Percy doesn't kill the Minotaur with his own horn, but he just left the horn there, so I think it does happen. Riptide does not appear in his pocket anytime he loses it, like in the books. So, that kinda sucks. I feel like that's way too much of an easy kill, right? If Percy had had to duck a couple of times and then killed the Minotaur, I'd have liked to see that better. And I don't know why the you drew when you sleep scene is a deleted scene, because I've seen it with my eyes. Also, what are all these adults doing here that's like a full on, bold man over there. Why are there adults at Camp Half-Blood? The only adults should be Mr. Brunner and Dionysus. I don't think it's even mentioned in this whole movie. Why is he like showing off? Why is he so beefy? Well, frankly, I'm just a junior protector. I don't have my horns yet. What the hell does that mean? I don't have my horns yet. Do his horns give him magical abilities that would have prevented Sally from dying? Do they? No, they do not. They're just Horns, and why would a title mean that he suddenly gets horns? How is that biologically possible? I know this is mythology, okay, I know it, but it makes no sense. So is, like, his body just knows that now he's allowed to grow horns, or is it that once he grows horns, he gets that title? I don't think they ever explained it to us, but I also don't want to get an explanation because it's stupid. I feel like this being in the forest and just like randomly makes it look much more ragtag than it should be. Like Robin Hood, why are there like no places for specific things? Everything is just happening out in the open. The he's complaining about the arrows Newcomer. and he's walking right Hello. in front of the firing range. Gosh. Like what does he expect? Look. Okay, they're climbing no. a rope ladder, yes, whoa. Way. Where's the lava wall? Why does it look like they're preparing for war? I mean, I know they are, but it's literally a summer camp. Oh, there we go, in the trees. That's kind of cool. <laughs> Where are they backflipping? <laughs> oh, I'm a loser. I have dyslexia, ADHD. Okay, yeah, keep reminding us. No, Annabeth is coming. Oh, I hate this. I hate this because we're never going to see Annabeth being as badass as she is in this moment. And I hate that trope with female characters. Like, obviously, when the hero or the male protagonist sees her, he has to fall in love because she's so incredibly cool. What's her name? <laughs> she was squashy like a bug. Her name. Annabeth. But she can't be that incredibly cool that he can't save her later on. So she has to be a damsel in distress or an idiot. Yeah, the goddess of wisdom. And of war. Ugh. Ugh. Don't share that look. Don't share that look. It's the first book. What the hell is Mr. Brunner doing there with like a flock of centaurs? Flock? What's the right term? Herd? What are those things? The centaurs. I know Percy is not interested in mythology, but I feel like everyone who's watched Narnia knows what a centaur is. Mr. Brunner, you're a horse? If there was any doubt at all, 
<laughs> as to who his father was, like, it's gone from this moment on. Why would Poseidon build a cabin for his kid? Oh, here we go. Aphrodite chicks. They all look Ooh. the same. The mother's a goddess of love, so you know where that leads. Hey, bye bye! <laughs> Why would they all be interested in like one guy who's like half goat? Give them some credit. They're just like there tanning by the rocks. Like, ooh, who might my father be? There's like tridents everywhere. It's near the lake. I, pff, I could never tell. Hmm, a trident. Another trident. Percy, are, are you getting the hints? There we go. How many? 27 minutes in. I guess that makes sense. Why right? didn't anybody tell me? People told you. If you were paying attention to the movie, Percy, you would know. I don't like that he knows this before Capture the Flag. It gives him too much of an advantage. That's why your mother married your stepfather. They don't talk about it. His pungent odor masked the smell of your blood. So they just like literally picked and chose what they wanted from the book. They were like, mm, 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 and then everything else to the trash. Like, um, their ages. <laughs> The first 40 minutes of this movie aren't that far off from the books, like taking it with a grain of salt, like I could see it, but then the quest starts and it goes like The fury and the Minotaur were only the beginning. First, you must train. You must train, but Zeus has already given the ultimatum of 14 days. He's been asleep for three, so there's 11. God. How do you guys wear this stuff? It weighs more than me. Look, well, having the newbies play in Capture <laughs> Wait, the Flag what? without any training Wait, whatsoever oh. is a bit irresponsible, but oh. that's the way Cap have blood rolls. Rant incoming. This is one of the things that I hate about this movie, is that it makes it look like, besides Aphrodite, all the other gods have the one kid. Annabeth, like the daughter of Athena. Luke, the son of Hermes. Aphrodite, like a hundred chicks. Percy's the son of Poseidon, and everyone else is just like random. There's, there's nobody else. There's no cabins, so we don't get to see any sense of like these people are siblings and these people are siblings. They're just like random people who are not important and they're just like fighting in the woods. That's why the cabin aspect is so important. This feels very disorganized and like they're not as important as the named characters because we don't know who their godly parent is. Stop lollygagging! Percy, stop staring at Annabeth. Percy. It's weird. Two blue-eyed people should not be in love. This, why is he this doing this to him? It's Percy Jackson. And he should have gone directly to the Hermes cabin. What? He's Percy Jackson. <laughs> and he's this loser. We'll take him. Oh, because Luke has to seem like a hero I'm from Luke. the beginning. Son of Hermes and camp leader. There we go. Camp <laughs> leader. Not like the camp counselor of the Hermes cabin. What makes you camp leader? There's like everyone behind you seems older than you. These people are not teenagers. <laughs> I understand that they wanted to make them like older kids because of like child labor laws. Those people are adults with jobs. I'm messing with you. Smile a little bit. It's good for you, kid. It's good for you, kid? What the hell is that supposed to mean? What is the age difference between these two actors I can't see? It's clear to see that Annabeth and Luke, like, have no relationship here. I feel like they don't even mention that. Why is she smiling and looking at him? Why does she have a bow on her back? The rant is starting. <laughs> oh my god, stop giving him mysterious looks. This feels very disorganized. They're just, like, running through the woods. Where's the strategy? Just running through the woods, leaping over, like, fallen trees. Annabeth has a bow and arrow for some reason. What's this after the Hunger Games? Is that it? Full on looks like they're killing each other. Percy, I know where the flag's at. Come on. I know where the flag's at. How do you know where the flag's at? Give me strategy. Why would he take Percy? <laughs> okay, that was a cool shot. And Percy's like a complete imbecile. He does not know how to fight here, which obviously makes sense because he's never been in a fight. He's never been taught. But then he's like, oh. <laughs> I'm remembering, I'm the protagonist, so... Sons of berries! Watch out! Whoa, that's a sword, that's a sword! What? What kind of comment is that? And why would that guy backflip in that oh, moment? So, Percy has always been like a, a prodigy with the sword, but... <laughs> okay, that was funny. But uh, here, it, it, it takes it to a, another level, because he's held the sword once in his life. <sighs> And suddenly he's like kicking the asses of everyone who's been at camp for at least a summer or like longer than him. Ooh, oh my god, there's the flag, unguarded. And now we get Percy like being a total badass and beating Annabeth. <laughs> I don't believe it. I just don't. Also, Annabeth and her knife, like, we don't know her. Why, why do they keep coming from the trees? Why are you like this? Just, just kill him. Don't take your helmet off. We know you're hot. 
My mother is goddess of wisdom and battle strategy. Oh, you have to say it like that, do you? You know what that means? I never lose. Oh, I always thing. Also, win. no. That doesn't seem I very wise. Lose. Okay, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Kill him! And everyone just goes there to watch for some reason. Like, this is the most incredible fight that you've ever seen. Like, this random girl, the only daughter of Athena against this movie. Ah, they changed. I just noticed. Hey, Kyra, should we get in there and stop him? She's killing him, man. You gotta be kidding. This is the best part. Okay, Karen is the freaking worst, but they changed Clarice for Annabeth. She's the one bullying him at the creek. That changes their dynamics so much. It's the, the worst. worst. What the hell? Why is like all team red looking at this fight? Go look for the blue flag. This makes no sense. Like, oh my God, she's so cool. She beat up this dude who's been at camp for one day. Awesome. And the blue team is also looking. What the hell is this? Like prison dynamic. I hate that Poseidon just keeps whispering in his ear, telling him the answer to all his problems. Let Percy be smart or clever. <sighs> and he was like, oh my god, look at him, look at him put his hand in the wall. Go stab him in the back, NMF. Oh my god. So now, now that he's healed, he's gonna be a great sword fighter. That makes so much sense. I can't skip. I'm sorry, but here it feels like everyone knows that Percy's the main character. Why are they all waiting around looking at him? Why is he so good at sword fighting all of a sudden? Why do they keep flipping? Hero pose. Oh, no, Luke. No, they should have made a joke at the end that they do this for every new camper to boost their confidence. They let them win and be the hero at their first capture the flag game. They're all like, oh my God, let's make him win. That would be very, very funny. But of course not because he's the main character. We have to take it seriously. Now we're gonna get Hades coming out of the bonfire. This feels like the worst. It feels like a very badly organized. Where are the tables? Um, hey Percy. Um, we're having party at our place later. Our place? Where do you live? In the trees? Love to come too, <laughs> to the party. You know, thanks for inviting me, ladies. Why is he a loser all of a sudden? Beat it, nymphs. Nymphs? Isn't that racist? <laughs> Available, what time's the party? Oh my god, Grover, please like stop. More like Best a mutant. Calling him a hero. I'm not gonna grow a fishtail or gills or anything like that, am I? Not likely. I Although a huge ego isn't out of the question. <laughs> I'm so I don't like you very much. Possible. Uh, I definitely have strong feelings for you. I just haven't decided if they're positive stop. or negative yet. No, no. You figure it out. Oh. You'll be the first. Oh. oh my god. Oh. Why is there light coming out of the goblet? Oh, that made me suffer so much. But what I actually wanted to say, I forgot. That was so cringe that I forgot what I wanted to say. He's like, it doesn't seem like you like me very much. You haven't spoken once. This is your first time speaking, basically. You just shared looks. Why would you think she doesn't like you? They just fought, and Annabeth's clearly the egotistical one here, being like, I always win, which makes no sense. But then they're like, oh my god, our parents hate each other, and I definitely have very strong feelings for you. They're clearly not hate. We, we haven't seen the haters to lovers at any point in this. They're like, indifference? to one-sided, maybe like, competitiveness, and that's it. That That's all we get. So don't try to sell me on the fact that she hates Percy, because she doesn't. We haven't seen it. Don't tell us. Show us. Hades! Stay back! I'm sorry. Oh, who the hell does Mr. Brunner think he is? Like, oh, I have two swords against Hades. He is unhinged. And why is Annabeth like being so scared of this? Like, where is your gigantic ego from before? Now you're already hiding behind Percy? Mom? Once you convince them of your innocence, we will do everything in our power to bring back your mother. I'm sorry, but <laughs> Chiron is an idiot if he thinks like that small pep talk is gonna keep a teenager from doing whatever they, the hell they want. One other big departure from the book, it's an illegal quest. <laughs> oh, why is everyone always like in high ground? And the fact that Percy's the only one who has like an actual house, even though it doesn't have like walls, <laughs> everyone else just lives in tents. Like the hierarchy is like so terrible, like the elitism. 
Everyone just lives in tents. From the underworld? Whatever it takes. Oh, yeah, well, maybe he'll outsmart you. Why is Annabeth so opposed to this? She should be, like, very willing to go out on the first quest. They don't make a quest sound like an important thing. Like, that has never happened before, like, in years. Whose idea was it to make hey, guys. a gamer? Heard <laughs> it makes no sense. And how does Grover not know that he has this here? This makes no sense. There's no walls. The minute it rained, everything would get ruined. I don't like the logistics of this camp. My dad's a jerk. I've never met him. You too? You too? Everyone! But they just needed this moment for them to bond because there's been nothing else. This is a map to Persephone's pearls. The fact that this whole quest in the movie is about getting the pearls that get them out of the underworld is so stupid. Why couldn't they just try to get to the underworld and on their way have these little adventures? And the only adventure that we get that's actually in the book is Medusa's Lair. We don't get St. Louis, we don't get Ares and the mechanical thingamadigs with like getting Aphrodite's scarf or whatever. I guess we do get the Lotus Casino, but we'll get there when we get there. Another accurate thing, I guess, they do take the bus that leaves them in the middle of nowhere. Oh, because they're looking for the... Never mind. I wish the bus had exploded. Okay, it is called Ani M's Garden Emporium. And here's where we gotta get the iconic, like, using the iPod as a mirror thing. And Grover seeing his, like, uncle. Okay, well, yeah. Why is Annabeth so useless always, like... She's so scared. Oh my god, she can't even take this one grown woman who's never trained a day in her life. Like, backflip her, something, judo flip her. Just run away. Like, fight against Medusa somehow. She just stands there. And now she can't run away because of the statue holding her. Would have been nice if Luke had warned us about Medusa. Maybe he just didn't know. First hint we get to Luke being evil would have been nice if Luke had warned us about Medusa. I guess that's something. Clearly, Annabeth and Luke have no relationship in this universe. With the motel going to happen now, yes, because Grover is falling asleep at the wheel, they're gonna die. Imagine if that's the way the movie ended. Just... And why is Grover driving? I wish it was Annabeth driving, then she could be kind of useful. But no. <laughs> Stopping for the night, and now the flirting at the pool is gonna happen. Hooray! Percy just being at the bottom of things. God. I don't know how many times I'm gonna start with I'm sorry today, but I'm sorry. But how does Percy know that he can cure, heal other people with his magical powers? Like yesterday, he didn't even know he could do that to himself. <sighs> He's way overpowered. Don't any gods see their kids? It's forbidden. It's not forbidden, they're just And how is that gonna make sense in the second movie once we find out that Zeus had a daughter? No, he's not my son, he's stepson. He did not come oh my God. Coins. Ever since he started oh with the drugs and the alcohol, he's never- oh, I'm no. glad they included Five this. I mean, he's a horrible character, but the guy was really selling it. The fact that that's just there in Nashville, is that it has to be real. Like, the, the Centennial Park, the Pantheon, the fact that that's just there is incredible. I've been to Nashville and I didn't see that. I want to see that, because why the hell is that there? It's amazing. Complete replica of the Parthenon in Nashville. Come on, show us that you love architecture and nerd out a little bit, but no, she's just gonna give us Wow, that's amazing. Complete replica of the Parthenon. Give me something, Annabeth. Give me something. <laughs> okay, we're gonna get the flying shoe scene. So kind of from this moment on, nothing is going to follow the books anymore, like the quest. This is completely out of left field. And because they needed conflict, we got the Hydra. Even though we could have gotten the Chimera at the St. Louis Arc, but... Got this. You got one more. Whoa, hey, yo, thanks. You're gonna kill the janitors. Chill. Those are working class Americans! <laughs> okay, that was funny. This is the only thing that she does that's like kind of helpful. But she she's the daughter of wisdom and she never gets any ideas. It's always Percy like, oh, I have an idea of how we can solve this. What the hell is that hug about? He's just like, woo, with Grover and why are they hugging? I don't feel like this is hug worthy. And then we get the Hydra. 
Okay, and now that we are in the diner, this is where we should be getting Ares, but Ares is nowhere to be found. At least we're getting news position. Things are going badly. I bet fans who had read the book before watching the movie were so relieved that we were kind of getting back on track after that weird Nashville Parthenon thing. So they were like, oh, finally something that's gonna be movie accurate again, just to be disappointed. <laughs> Or not, by the, this iconic casino scene with Lady Gaga playing on the background. I do hate what Grover's character turns into because they don't just like want to stay there, they're like high. They get high on life and Annabeth turns into even more of a dimwit than she already is. When you get to Vegas, are there like automatic fireworks going off? I want to know, I've never been. So sad that this scene is the most iconic out of the whole movie and I can't play any of it because it has so much copyrighted music. But that car is foreshadowing they're gonna upgrade later. I understand the concept of free food is incredible, but that looks terrible. Like, what is it? Just sugar? And then the camera like starts going in circles. I mean, they went off with this scene. Like, a lot of scenes aren't very creative, aren't that fun to look at, but this... Where did they get the idea that in order to get them to stay, they had to like get them high on life? And literally high. Couldn't it just be like a cool place? No. Drugs. <laughs> I bet Rick hated this scene the most when he read the script. that we birthed this scene. I can't. I'm gonna cry. It's... <laughs> I've seen theories that people think that since Lin-Manuel Miranda is in the casino scene in the TV show that this is gonna be a musical episode and I'm like, okay, I don't want a lot of things to change too much but I really, really want a musical episode. I think that would be the greatest thing and if we're not getting a musical episode in season one, I think there's a good place to place it in season five. When the Apollo cabin gets mad with the Aries cabin, they curse them to like rhyme. They could curse a whole camp to sing and we could get like one of the beginning episodes with singing and that would be incredible. I just, I just need more Percy Jackson related songs because the musical is everything for me. It's incredible. And if you haven't listened to it, do yourself a favor and go listen to it. And then go watch my video about it. When would, okay, after this, what do we do? I think we just go straight to Los Angeles Hades, and then fight with Luke, and then Olympus. I understand that things have to be more dramatic for movies. They just walked out and left in the book. They're like, they could just walk out the door. And the fact that in every single movie, they leave the keys in, and this car, which was there like on display, had gas in it. Incredible. Like, how stupid do you have to be? <sighs> Who's driving? Grover? Annabeth does not drive again. Uh, ever since that Medusa thing. Hollywood. All right. I can get us there in four hours. Maybe three. Did I miss something? They know it's in Hollywood. Do they know it's specifically the Hollywood sign? Like, how do they jump to that conclusion? Die and come back. You know what? I think I know what he wants. What? You gotta pay the ferryman. Annabeth should know this. Why does she allow them to be stupid? Annabeth, I feel like she only knows things after the fact and she was like, oh, this is this. And they're like, okay, well, you couldn't have known that before we got into trouble. This is basic stuff. You should know that you pay the ferryman with drachmas. The drachma, the drachma. And thank God Annabeth picked up those golden drachmas at the beginning because if they hadn't, they would not get to go through the river sticks. Over the river sticks. It's confusing. I want to know who decorated this set and was like, yes, I think the entrance to the underworld would have a lot of candles because someone would go through the trouble of putting them up there and lighting every single one. We drowned in a bathtub, the three of us at the same time. Interestingly enough, in the books they're like, oh, it doesn't look like hell, it only looks what you believe hell to look like, like what you believe the afterlife looked like. This literally looks like hell. Like fiery pits. I mean, it's a cool visual, but they're literally in hell. 
And this is where all people go in Greek mythology. So it's just, there's just like the bad place. Where's the good place? Where's Asphodel, you know, the neutral place? Where's Elysium? All lives end in suffering and tragedy. All lives end in suffering and tragedy? What? What kind of mythology only has a bad place? And it looks like he has a very decrepit castle. So not very godlike. I'm like surrounded by the torturing. If I was Hades, I would be like away from all that. No Cerberus either. So Annabeth doesn't get like- This is as far as I go. As far as I go, you literally delivered them to the door. So pff, dude, you already did what you had to do. One of the things I hate the most about this movie is just Persephone, her whole character. It's the worst. They sense the presence of another animal. Great, you smell goat. Oh, how old is Grover supposed to be in this movie? Oh my god, I Persephone, had keep it in your pants. He is a is minor. Persephone! Oh my gosh, why is she so horny? Poor goat. <laughs> why make Persephone sassy? That's my question. And why, like her costume and everything, she just leads them to him. Ah, Persephone. You poor gal. She definitely got the short end of the straw, like, adaptation-wise. I think this might be an unpopular opinion. I think Man. the Hades thing is fun. <laughs> I kind of look like a rock star. <laughs> he literally has a guitar there in his lair. Gods are supposed to be wacky, and this Welcome. man is just that, so. I didn't expect you to look like this, man. <laughs> kind of stylish. I like it. <laughs> Would you prefer that I looked like this? Thing. It works for you! I feel like they sacrifice a lot of Percy's humor in order to have Grover be the comedic relief. Like a lot of those one-liners, like stick to the Majagger stuff that works for you. I feel like that would have been more Percy coded. But since Percy's the hero, he's the cool one. He doesn't get those witty one-liners. And that's a real shame, because that's you know one of Percy's three pillars. Sarcasm next to sword and water. Oh, so Annabeth does seem to have a knife, but only like certain scenes in the background. And honestly, she looks kind of stupid yeah, with it. Because mother. if you have a sword, why yeah, use a knife in those situations? It's, it's tiny, she's just and she's not holding it right. Did she get any battle training whatsoever for this movie? Luke rigged it. He put the bolt in his shield and used us. Luke stole the lightning bolt. Okay, Luke betrayed us. <gasps> This random character who we've seen for a max of five minutes, he betrayed us. I feel so betrayed. Especially because Annabeth and Luke had no relationship, so. And now uh, Persephone just goes completely out of pocket. She doesn't look like the goddess of spring and summer. She just looks like, I don't know. I don't like how she looks like. Like that clothing, <sighs> I know she's in Hades' realm, but they could have made like a dress with dead flowers. That would have been really cool. Or with like pomegranates or something. Betrayal. Who was even mentioned in this? I feel like Zeus, who knows all and sees all, should know that Percy is trying to get the bolt to him. So even if it happens like a couple of hours later, I mean, he's like, okay, I knew you were trying, and it, but you know, fair enough. I don't remember Annabeth and Sally being in this fight, so I'm very confused. Oh, her little knife. Okay. Does Percy put on the flying shoes for this fight? Okay, so Annabeth is a little bit useful in this fight, but now now she hides behind Percy, of course. Please the explain it to us. Crumbling down. Uh. Percy, let's go. That's disappointing. Let's go. Having heard the reprise of Good Kid in the last day of summer, <laughs> I'm sorry, this is just nothing. It's, it doesn't even deserve to lick the last day of summer shoes. <laughs> Once again, we only see Percy having worn those shoes once, but now that he needs them in a fight, he's going to like completely master them in five seconds, like he did with um, sword, no, not sword bending, just sword using, I guess. Luke was just prepared to like kill the people in that helicopter because the mist obviously doesn't exist in this universe until movie two where we get mist in a bottle. <sighs> Anything that reminds me of the second movie that like, gets points off this movie. Fun thing about the end of the book is that it's against Ares, okay? Fun. And then we get Luke's betrayal 
and we don't get a fight. Just Luke winning all the time. But here, Percy beats Luke. Percy never beats Luke in the books until the fifth one, like actually beats him. You know, he escapes him, but he doesn't beat him. In this one, he beats him. Uh, like a very different feeling to the end because yes, we beat Ares who was being controlled all this time, but we didn't beat Luke. Like that was like the knife to the back that we got and to the gut. But here's just like, okay, so this random guy who we've talked to once betrayed us and then yeah, we beat him. So this was, were they thinking of making a second movie when they made this? It doesn't feel like they were. Maybe they were wrong. Maybe you're no son of Poseidon. Maybe they were wrong. Maybe you're no son of Poseidon. Why would he say that? Is he trying to give him the idea to use water against him? What? Luke, use your logic. By the way, does Luke have a scar over his eye? I didn't notice until now that it kind of looked like he did. But like the faintest thing and they haven't even mentioned him going on the quest. Why is Luke, out of all people, so angry at the gods. He has no backstory, so this comes completely out of nowhere. And this is one of them, one of the posters for the movie. Wow, we actually haven't seen Percy use water all that much. So I guess this is kind of cool. We never see him control the ocean because they're never by the ocean. That's sad. Okay, very cool, but was there really so much water in there? Okay, cool shot, I'll give them that. Did he win? It's that easy. He just had to be reminded that he's a son of Poseidon. Thank you, Luke. He wouldn't have won without that comment that you made for some reason. I think I am the son of Poseidon. Did Percy just kill Luke? So Sally can't go into Camp Hapblood, but she knows what you have to do to go into Olympus? I feel like it's cooler if the entrance is from the bottom, not from up there, because how do you get up there? Can she go into Olympus? Oh, she's going to. What the very arbitrary rules of what mortals can and can't do here. Like, how does Sully know all of this? She just spent like the one summer with Poseidon, and I very much doubt that Poseidon took her to Olympus. But we're gonna get the Olympus scene with the gods and the blah blah blah. And Hermes being a different Hermes from the second movie, by the way. So she can't get through, can't get through. but she I can't know. go into the elevator. What? Make it make sense, movie. Make it make sense. I know you can't, but I'm gonna demand it from you either way. Let's see what gods we can see. Okay, okay. No, I can't tell who any of them are. Are they gigantic right now? Oh, ooh, interesting. In the books, there's like guys on one side, girls on the other side. Here they're like mixed. Do they really need a watch to know what time it is? And does Poseidon really have a trident tattooed on him? Let's be rational. War is not the answer. What's that accent? Is that supposed to be Hera or Ath Athena, right? Time has run out. Wait! Oh my god, they should have known the second Percy walked up to wow. Olympus. They're gigantic. Okay, that has to be Athena then. But why would Athena sit on Zeus's right side? I think you might be looking for this. Throw it. Who are you? Who are any of you? They have like no distinctive features. Athena could at least be wearing her helmet. Demeter could be like covered in vines or something. Where, where's even Ares? Give me the bones, lightning thief. Can they stop saying lightning thief? We get what movie we're watching. This movie kind of makes Zeus look like a, a weakling <laughs> because he did nothing. Like he didn't prove his powers besides exploding the door at the beginning. Luke. At least Poseidon has scales Son on his armor, so we know he's the sea god. Okay, that's Hermes, supposedly. I don't think he says anything. You see, he was angry at you. All of oh, you. Oh, now we get the he lesson. He wanted you to destroy yourselves. Wow. Oh, all these people that are not gonna get any lines whatsoever. We're supposed to care about their reactions. And Percy learned this lesson like five minutes ago, but now he's like, yes, I believe in that too, Luke. You taught me. You have done well. Okay, and that's it? Sue's giving Percy a compliment? <laughs> Sounds fake, but okay. Zeus, I have a good friend. He's a hmm. satyr. He just Named demands Oliver. this from he's my protector, Zeus without having been offered. Why we the okay. Except <laughs> dead. Did they give us a reason at the beginning as to why Zeus decided that the gods could not interact with their like demigod offspring? 
because I might have been talking over that part, but it makes no sense. Is there is there a reason? Please let me know down below in the comments. Is there a reason? Because it's stupid. Gods use demigods for quests all the time, so can they only use demigods that they didn't create? <laughs> Sire? Why didn't you ever come back? I wanted to. When I was with you and your mother, I became less concerned with my responsibilities. I was becoming human. It's a bad thing. For God, Zeus thought so. So we finally got the reason, the and it was stupid. From ever Great. Contact with their children. Didn't see that one coming. But if you ever need me, I'll be there for you. In your thoughts. And in your dreams. Stand by you, person. Always. Ironic that he would say this, because if you watch the second movie, my condolences to you, but if you've watched that movie, the whole plot about their relationship is that the whole thing about their relationship is that uh, Poseidon is not answering Percy, <laughs> but he does answer Tyson right after he says this. Ah! Uh, Poseidon sucks in, in the movies. Oh, uh, this is a cool shot. It kind of gives off like Narnia you can come vibes. Visit me anytime. Just promise me that I don't have to see that loser Gabe ever again. Oh no, she's gonna kick him out. Yeah, he's gone. He's out of our lives forever. Dead. <laughs> Please just end already. What else is there? Are we just gonna get like Grover reunion and then that last scene where he's like fighting with Annabeth, but it's all sexy and they're making eyes at each other. And like the original scene, they kissed, but they cut that from the movie. This is where you belong. This is where you belong. Good job, man. Good job, man. You saved the world. Good job, man. That's all you're getting. Oh, purse, watch Why it. would Whoa, they do that? The They're so stupid. I hate the whole Grower Persephone thing, but I might hate this more. No, I hate the Grower Persephone thing more. But okay, now she's great again. She can take five guys on at the same time. But she couldn't take newbie Percy. Ugh. And then I feel like because they changed things from the second movie so much to like fit more with the books that they don't have any chemistry in the second movie. I feel like they don't like each other in the second movie, like romantically. Okay, so she killed five guys and now she's like, okay, who do I take? Who's next? What kind of training is this? Oh, I, like I hate that there's shot. no organization whatsoever to this camp. There's like, okay, you do you, Mr. Brunner will supervise one thing and then everyone else just go fight against Annabeth, I guess. Welcome home. Ugh. Welcome home? What? Didn't you go back together? Whoa, whoa, uh, wait. Like she needs underhanded tactics to beat him. Strategy. Don't ever let your opponent distract you. Ugh. Get a ponytail or a braid or something out of it. You can't sword fight with your hair down. God, just end it already. End my misery. I feel like they might have had some, like, battles stunt training but it i don't know i don't think it paid off <laughs> it doesn't look very good like i can see them thinking about every single move they're going to make and it just looks so fake and so rehearsed for some reason annabeth keeps pointing her sword at percy instead of fighting like that is the end of the battle uh is is it over is it over now please tell me it is okay should we watch the post credit scenes? I feel like they don't deserve me watching the post credit scenes. We know what it is. Okay, I'm not gonna watch it. I don't hate myself that much. <sighs> Gabe walking into the apartment and he opens the fridge even though it says not to and then... Oh my god, I just realized that Medusa's face freezes him even though they said you have to open her eyes but her eyes open on their own for some reason, like with the Hydra thing. Anyhow, uh, the fact that it's by mistake means it's taking power away from Sally. It's not her choice, it's just a thing that happened by accident, which like takes a lot away from her character. God damn it, movie. Even that small detail, like you played off for like a couple of laughs. I, it would have been more brutal to see Sally kill him on purpose. <laughs> Make Sally a cold-blooded murderer, that's all that the fandom wants. So that was the Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief movie. What a ride. Um, it's definitely like an entertaining movie, but it's definitely like has completely different vibes to the book. It's not giving what the book is giving. At least it's like 
interesting to look at there's some interesting designs i'm like trying to find something good to say about it because you guys know that i don't feel this way about it actually i made a whole video for april's fools talking about everything great about the lightning thief movie it's all sarcastic it's like half an hour of me being sarcastic which is great the one thing that i did enjoy like i actually laughed out loud a couple of times because there's just some things that are funny like percy being like am i crazy should i be on medication that took me off guard. I didn't know that was coming. It was very funny. Character-wise, I think this movie suffers a lot because it does not build up their characters. The whole Percy Luke thing, they, they didn't work for it, so it's not satisfying. Like, that character arc is extremely weak. Then we have Grover, who isn't Grover at all, but at least he's not pretending to be, so they, like, created another character for him. And I don't hate his character, you know, except all of the, the flirting with a, an eternal goddess. Uh, that's not his fault though. So I'm okay with them having changed Grover because he's at least like a fully fleshed character. Annabeth on the other hand, oh I don't like her, I don't understand her motives. Like yeah she says like in a throwaway line that she's been at camp all her life, she wants to go out, but once she's out she doesn't scream ambitious and proud and you know stubborn to me. She just screams like Oh, she, she has a couple of moves, a couple like tricks up her sleeve, but at the end of the day, she needs to be saved by Percy. And I don't like to see that. And they're trying to tell us that this is a haters to lovers when we both know they, they liked each other from the first time they saw each other. The whole haters thing just lasted like five minutes and it, was, it wasn't it was even a thing. I don't have to go over the like, whole like parent rivalry by herself. Like Percy didn't even have to do anything. So that, that comment about like, why do you hate me? is like, it's fake. She doesn't. We haven't seen that. You're just telling us that. So we're like, oh, there's chemistry, but they don't like each other. No, that only happened in the first, first scene that they saw each other. There's no bickering. There's no banter. There's nothing between them. And we get the, the hotel scene instead of like the, the truck scene where they're like at the back of the truck riding with the Sioux animals to go to the Lotus Casino quite a downgrade from uh, because we're friends see we'd bring any more stupid questions so yeah I think what I said is are the only good things I can say about this movie also it is much better than the second movie which is not as much of a compliment as you might think because that movie sucks I feel like that's all I have to say. This is probably a very long video, so please enjoy it. And I'm so looking forward to watching like a good adaptation. We already got a good adaptation, don't get me wrong. The Lightning Thief, the musical is incredible. I, I would so want to watch it in like real life. That would make me so happy. But we're getting another adaptation. And since Rick is on board, I have very high hopes. And I think, I think it's going to be good from what we've seen. Very looking forward to that. And please let me know if you think we're getting a musical episode in season one, the casino episode, or if you like me would want to see a musical episode, like randomly, I think season five, what I set for that would work very well. Like when the cabins are in disarray, when they get the full prophecy, and maybe Percy even going down to like the underworld and getting like the curse of Achilles. That would be a lot of fun. I just, I love musicals. So hearing like the musical themes from my favorite characters, from my favorite ships, and then singing together in harmony and singing about their emotions and Percy having his like I want song. I'm a musical theater nurse, so <laughs> that would make me so happy. I don't think it's gonna happen, but if it did, my jaw would be on the freaking floor. <laughs> so please leave a like if you like this video. Comment down below your favorite thing from this movie and then your least favorite thing. Let's start with favorite because that's gonna be harder for you. Honestly, finding a least favorite thing is also gonna be hard because, you know, we hate a lot of it. <laughs> so please let me know down below. I'm interested in seeing like other people's favorite thing from this movie because it's, you know, so hard to find something even remotely good. Subscribe if you haven't already. Click that bell button to get notifications every time I post a new video. I post videos just like this one every single Friday. Ah! Okay. Mama, I was um, on a roll. It's just kind of super jump scared by my dad. <laughs> subscribe if you have, I don't know where I was. Subscribe if you haven't already. Click that bell button to get notifications every time I post a new video. I post videos just like this, but with less jump scares from my dad every single Friday. And I guess I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>
बाई